At the end of this 8 minute video, you're gonna be able to register your Palo Alto firewall and the Microsoft Azure with each other. In order to allow single sign-on from your Global Protect VPN remote access users. Hi, my name is Ricardo and for this tutorial I'm gonna assume that you already have Global Protect configured in your environment. If it's not the case and you need some help configuring Global Protect, here's a link to a video that can help you. Check it out. As a quick recap, I'm using my file interface Ethernet 1.1 to configure my portal and external gateway. For the single sign-on, I'm going to use SAML. So let's first configure Azure to accept the file registration. So after logging into Azure, you need to use the search on top of the screen to search for enterprise applications. Let's add then a new application. And the application we're looking for is Palo Alto Networks Global Protect. Just click on it. If you want to change the name, go ahead. I'm just gonna leave like this and click on Create on the bottom of the screen. After the application is created, click on the menu Single Sign-On and choose SAML as the method. Now we need to set the basic SAML configuration. Click on Edit. On the right side, we need to enter three parameters. First, we enter our URL as shown on the pattern below. Copy the URL. On top of the page, you need to add an identifier. I'll just paste the URL and add the string in the end as shown in the pattern just below. I'll do the same for the reply URL. For the identifier and reply URL, we can't forget to add the port 443. After that, we can save the configuration. Now we will download the Federation Metadata XML file under SAML Certificates. The last thing we need to do is to define which users are allowed to perform the SAML authentication. Depending on your Azure license, you can add Active Directory groups. Since I'm using a trial license, I can only add users. For this tutorial, I'll assign the user GP user. And that's all we need to do in Azure. So let's go to the firewall now. Now we are going to import the XAML configuration that we downloaded from the Azure portal. Under Device, XAML Identify Provider, click on Import. Now let's give a name for the profile and find the XML file we exported earlier. For this tutorial, I'm not going to verify the Azure certificate. But whenever configuring in production, please keep the certificate validation active. Now we need to add a new authentication profile in order to use it on the portal and gateway. I'll just call the profile XAML. The type is, of course, XAML and I'll select the SAML identity provider we just created. Under Advanced, I'll just allow all users. Since I'm already regulating on Microsoft Azure, the users that are allowed to authenticate. Now in the Porter and Gateway configurations, we need to choose the new authentication profile. After that, you can commit your configuration. 
Now we are going to test the XAML configuration. I have a remote Windows client that's connected to the internet. Let's first log into our portal. So my URL is vpn.netsums.com. And you can see that the URL gets forward to login.microsoftonline.com. I'm going to choose the user gpuser at netsums.com to connect to the portal. That's the user we gave permission on Azure to use the same authentication. Enter the password. We see that we want to stay signed in. You can see that Microsoft redirects us back to our portal. If we take a look at office.com now, and I click on sign in, you can see that the GP user doesn't need to enter its credential anymore. The user is already signed in. Now I'm going to try the opposite. I signed out of my user and I'm going to sign in again using Azure. Enter the username. I select my username, the same one, gpuser at ad.netsums.com and I sign in. It's asking for my two-factor authentication. I allow my login on my smartphone. Now let's try to sign in using our Global Protect app. So when I try to connect to vpn.netsums.com using my Global Protect app, I get redirected from the app to the browser and the browser opens a new window, but it doesn't ask me for my user credentials. It just asks back if I want to open Global Protect to use my login credentials, the ones that I used before on Azure. If you want, you can check the box, always allow vpn.sums.com to open links of this type and click on Open Global Protect. And then it won't ask you anymore. And then you can see my Global Protect app is trying to connect to the best available gateway. So it gets connected without me having to enter again my user credentials. If you go back to the file under Monitor, Global Protect, you can see some information about the login from the user. More information regarding SAML, you can see under Systems. So if you want to take a look at the file for logs, you can go either to Global Protect or to Systems. Both of them are going to show you some information if you're having some problems connecting with SAML. But as a whole, the configuration is really straightforward. So guys, we did manage to finish in less than eight minutes. If you got some value from the video, just hit the like button. If you want, you can subscribe to the channel. And here's a video that can help you if you need some help configuring Global Protect. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.